Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a reverse dyed shirt. The shirt that I'm using is a Gildan Ultra Cotton t-shirt and it's kind of a forest green color. I think it's always fun to try some different colors when I do reverse dyes and not just the black shirts or the navy blue ones that I normally use. I'm going to tie this shirt in a geode design. So I'm going to tie it the way I normally tie a geode shirt. I'm going to grab an area where I'd like for the center of a geode to be, lift the shirt up off of the table, and then I'm going to slide my hand down to where I'd like for the bottom or the outer rings of that geode to be, and start tying from there. I think when you start tying from the outer rings of the geode out toward the center rings of the geode, that helps to keep the geode from looking like a bullseye. It makes the rings a little bit more wacky in shape or unusual in shape. They're not just complete circles. I'm also going to keep roughing up the areas too as I'm tying it. I don't want it to be too perfect. I don't care if there are a few folds or, you know, little indentions in the fabric. That's great. It makes it look all the more natural and unique. I'm also going to split some of the geodes. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take the sinew down through the middle when I get close to the center of the geode. I'm going to divide the center in a couple of different parts and tie those separately. That's going to make the centers of the geode a little bit more interesting. Whenever you look at anything in nature, it is not always exactly perfect. And that's what I'm trying to do when I tie these geodes. I don't want to think too much about it and I don't want to make them too much like each other. I want to try to make each one of them unique. So I am going to vary the lines and the distance between the lines in each of the geodes as well. I don't want to make them all the same size and I don't want to make the lines the same distance apart in all of them. You can put as many or as few geodes on a shirt as you'd like to. I know there are some people who when they tie geodes they tie a whole bunch of little bitty geodes on a shirt and I think it looks great. If that's the look that they enjoy, then that's perfect. Personally, I like a little bit bigger geodes. Geodes kind of make a shirt busy anyway, and the more little bitty ones that you put on a shirt, the busier the shirt gets. It just kind of depends on the look that you're going for. It's a personal preference thing. There is no wrong way to tie one of these. If you like the look of a whole lot of them, then by all means put a lot of little bitty ones on a shirt. There really is no wrong way to tie dye. By the way, since I am going to remove part of the color from this shirt, whenever I tie the geode and I get all the way down to the very end where there's not a whole lot of fabric, I will actually wind the sinew back a ways, back down toward the beginning of where I started tying on that geode before I cut it off. I think it just helps keep the sinew intact and keep it from unraveling throughout the whole entire process that I'm going to do to the shirt. I'm not going to untie this shirt until the very end when I'm rinsing it out the final time.
Okay, so I can't fit any more geodes on the shirt, but I'm going to take my sinew and do some definition lines in the area between all the different geodes. And as I'm tying those lines, I'm going to press the geodes down. If they're flat, it'll make it a little bit easier to apply the dye. For the color removal process, I'm going to use a product called Out White Bright Laundry Whitener. And I normally find mine at Walmart on the laundry aisle. They usually have it by the bleach products. It's not a bleach product though, so you don't need to be concerned that it's going to damage the fabric and it doesn't need to be neutralized. If you can't find any in your local store, I have a link down below where you can purchase some from Amazon. I'm going to remove the color from quite a few shirts at the same time, so I've placed them inside of a plastic tub or tote and I have the tub outside just simply because the Out White Bright does have a smell and I don't want that smell inside. I'm also wearing my respirator for this entire process because I don't want to inhale any of the fumes or the powder. I'm going to start by sprinkling the powder over the top of the shirts and then I'm going to pour boiling hot water over the top of the Out White Bright. I haven't sped this part of the video up and I wanted you to see that the minute that the hot water touches the Out White Bright, it starts to fizz and bubble and immediately remove the color. I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up, but I went ahead and added a second pan of really hot water to the container and then a little bit more Out White Bright. I want to make sure that the shirts are almost totally submerged in the Out White Bright solution. I left them in the Out White Bright for about 20 minutes. You don't necessarily need to leave them that long if it looks like the shirt has had as much color as you'd like removed, removed from the shirt. By the way, if you're trying to do a design where you just want to remove part of the color, if you submerge it in the Out White Bright like I did, it's going to remove it so fast that you probably won't have a chance to catch it before most of the color is removed. That's the nice thing about the sinew is everywhere where you put a sinew line, that area is not going to have the color removed. So you want to make sure you tighten your sinew down really well so that that wax coating will seal the fabric so that the Out White Bright can't get underneath that area. That's kind of one of the only challenges with Out White Bright is it works so well and it works so fast. It's tough to use it to remove color from a small area without accidentally removing most of the color from the shirt. So after about 20 minutes, I took the shirts into my utility sink and I rinsed them really well in cold water. Then I put them into my washing machine and I washed them along with a little bit of Dharma's professional textile detergent. You can wash them in any water temperature cycle that you would like, cold, warm, hot, it really doesn't matter. The purpose of washing them in between is to get out part of the residue from the Out White Bright and to get out part of the smell. From the washing machine, I put them into my soda ash solution and I soaked them for about 20 to 30 minutes. Then wrung them out of my panda spin dryer and set the shirts aside to allow them to dry. Because this is a thicker fold like a geode, I'm going to go ahead and allow the shirt to become bone dry before I start applying the dye. If you'd like more information about why I like to apply the dye to a dry shirt, I have a blog post covering this topic out on my website and there's a link down below in the description for this video to my website. Essentially, I get much better color saturation throughout the geode when it's dry when I apply the dye. Since the geode is totally dry, I'm going to spray the top with a little bit of soda ash solution that I've placed inside of a spray bottle. That's going to help the dye stick to the top just a little bit better. I'm going to dye this geode down in the muck, which basically means that I'm going to allow it to sit and to process down inside of the melting ice that's mixed with the dye. I'm going to randomly apply the dye colors to the various sections of the geode. So I'm using quite a few different dye colors. I've listed them down below in the description for this video, but let me go ahead and give them to you. I'm using Amber Waves, Marigold, Palomino Gold, Brazil Nut and Moose from Dharma Trading Company, Golden Pineapple, Straw, 
harvest wheat, mocha, camouflage, golden delicious, curry, and ecru from Pro Chemical and Dye. So the majority of the colors are yellows and golden brown type colors, which I thought would look really good with the lines from the forest green shirt. Since the weather's cooled off, I've kind of been warming up the color palettes that I've been using just a little bit. I mean, don't be concerned, I'm not giving up my purples and blues, but I thought I would try some of the more earthy tones with a few of these shirts I've been doing lately. Now I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of all the dye and add on a layer of ice. I want to add enough ice so that the shirt is almost sitting all the way down beneath the muck. It doesn't have to be totally submerged, but I want it pretty close. I'm not going to add any more ice later either, so this is the only layer that I'm going to add. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't add the ecru yet. I'm going to add that over the top of the ice. That will just kind of help fill in some of the gaps that might be in the dye and add a little added dimension to the geodes. Ecru is a fairly light color. Um, it's just kind of like a beigey, sometimes has a little bit of a, a green cast to it. It really is just a good filler color. I'm going to place this container down inside of a larger container and then put the lid on it. I'm going to set it aside and allow the ice to melt and then leave it for about 24 hours after all the ice melts. You can see there was a whole lot of muck covering up this geode, which is what I wanted. To rinse the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and dumped out the muck and then started rinsing the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I untied it, warmed the water up to hot, and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I know the shirt looks really dark right now, but don't be concerned. Just wait until it's rinsed and washed and you'll see how beautiful it turns out. After rinsing for a while, I went ahead and soaked the shirt in some really hot water. 
I put really hot water back inside this container along with a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent and just allowed the shirt to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and I continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so just like I promised, the shirt has been washed and dried and see how beautiful it is? I know it looked really dark, but you honestly have to wait until it's rinsed really well and washed to truly know the color, especially if you're muck dyeing a shirt. But I think this one looks gorgeous. I love the green lines and I love the green lines mixed with all of the earthier yellow tones. I think the geodes look awesome too. See the unusual shapes that I have in the centers and how they're not perfect, how there are some, you know, wonky shapes inside, how some of them have more than one center, you know, some have more green lines than others. I just love it when a shirt is interesting to look at. And a shirt like this, I think each time I look at it, I notice something different. You know, I'm noticing a little bit more of the orangey color coming off of the curry in places. Some of the lighter colors like the golden delicious and the golden pineapple. I just think that's cool when each time you look at it, you find something interesting to focus on. But what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this one? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you're enjoying the content of this YouTube channel, I sure would appreciate it if you would subscribe. And if you'll hit the bell, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.